What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we saw the stock market going up across the board and we're starting to blast right through resistance levels. Was this just a minor correction and we're back on the bull or is there more selling possibly coming in the future? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so on the SPY ETF, we did gap up and we did close up 1.41% and we're back to closing above all of the moving averages. So a quick thing I just want to take note of is the theme of this week has been prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So a lot of people always ask me, why don't you buy puts or why don't you short this market? And the answer is very simple. You don't try to short a bull market. When we had this drastic sell-off, there was a lot of people that became very bearish and they started to hedge and they started to buy puts. And all you really have to do to protect yourself against downside is go to cash. If you were defensive and you prepared for the worst by going to cash and then the market bounces higher, you're not losing any money. If you shorted and you bought puts or you tried to hedge with other strategies like volatility strategies, then you were losing money as the market continued to go higher. So I can't stress that enough and I had to use this as an opportunity to teach some of you why you don't need to try to short a market. Just go to cash and you're protected from downside and you're also safe from upside. If you try to short and the market goes higher, you're still losing money so you're really not doing yourself any favors. So remember on the SPY ETF, we were still bullish as long as the price action remained above the 50 EMA which was at that 370 level. As you can tell, the price action did remain above that level, and as a result, it looks like this market is going back to being bullish and we're starting to head higher. So price action is always going to be king, and then the trend will help confirm which bias the market is in. So because we're in a bull market, the bias is still to the upside, and the price action was still holding up above critical support, above a positive sloping 50 EMA. So hopefully last week's episodes and the weekend update helped you prepare for this possibility of a bounce because that is exactly what the market's doing and it's looking very bullish. We closed back above that 381 resistance level and it looks like we're heading back to the previous all-time high at 384. Don't forget the outstanding price target was never actually met which is still up here at 393. So if we can go back into this bull trend which looks like it's a high possibility this bull trend is going to start picking back up momentum here we're still gonna start heading back up to that level at 393. How long it'll take to get there is completely irrelevant because as long as the price action and the trend are bullish, it means we will slowly continue to grind towards that level. Remember, there will be another strong resistance at this 384 level, but if we break and close above that, you have to look at this market as it's gonna possibly just continue to run higher. We did open a really big gap that did not close and that gap will close near support at this 377 level. There could be strong support at 377 now that we've gapped up over it, but if we do break below there, there is still a strong support level at 374. So as you can tell, the bullish trending is coming back to the S&P 500 and the SPY ETF does look like it wants to continue to head higher. So watch these support levels very carefully because if they do hold up, they could be great buying opportunities. Next up is the triple Q's ETF and we saw the triple Q's gapping up as well and we did blast right through resistance at that 326 level. The triple Q's look like they wanna make a new all time high as soon as tomorrow and they're heading back towards my price target at $330. Remember if we break and close over 330, I do have another price target just above at 333. Support levels could be this 326 level or the gap close down at 323. As you could tell with the NASDAQ 100, we never broke the bull trend because the 5 EMA never crossed below the 13 EMA. A lot of you asked me, why are you waiting for the 5 EMA to cross below the 13 EMA? Because by the time it does that, it's going to be too late and you would have lost all of your money. It's actually the opposite. The fact that I was waiting for that cross allowed me to remain bullish and actually allowed me to have confidence to buy the dip. As you can tell, if you bought this dip, you've been handsomely rewarded because we're now much higher than the lows. So following the trend gives you a lot of information that allows you to be confident in your dip buying abilities. If you don't know what the trend is, how do you know which direction the market is likely going to head in the event that we do bounce off of a support level? So know your trend because the trend is your friend and if I haven't proven that the trend is your friend by now, then you really aren't paying attention to how many times we've called this market correctly. We've battled through a lot of bearish scenarios in this market ever since the election and we've been on the right side of the trade this entire time. So the trend is your friend and follow the price action and follow the trend, which are both still bullish. Does that mean we won't have any volatility? No, that's why I'm giving you the support levels that we could possibly head to. So as far as this bullish trend goes, the strongest support is still at the 20 simple moving average, which is down here around $319. Next up is the Dow Jones DIA ETF, and we see that Dow Jones did find resistance at the 20 simple moving average, 
but we're still holding up above a positive sloping 50 EMA. You can see we still have some bearish trending, but the Dow does look like it's starting to strengthen, and by far it is the weakest of the three indices. So look for the Dow to continue to hold up above this 50 EMA and this $300 support level. Next up is the ARK-K ETF, and we did see the ARK-K also gapping up, and we're still in a bullish trend holding up above a positive sloping 20 simple moving average. So the price targets on ARK-K are up here at 149, and if we break and close over that, it means we could easily head to $155. The strong support levels on ARK are at 141 and 135. Next up is the VIX, which is the fear indicator, and we see the VIX blasting right back down through that support level, which did not hold up at 28. So the VIX is going back lower and it is breaking below support, which should have allowed us to know if that correction was going to remain or not. So a low VIX means low fear, which means people are starting to get less and less fearful of a deeper correction. And that is why the VIX is falling so drastically. However, we still have some bullish trending on the VIX, so we're not completely out of the water yet. So we need to continue to watch those support levels. And if those support levels do start to break down, we will know that we're likely going to go into a deeper correction. But right now, the opposite is happening and we're seeing a low VIX as the market is blasting through resistance levels, which is bullish for the stock market. Next up is the US dollar and we do see the dollar back above the 50 EMA for two days in a row, but still holding up below resistance at 91.09. So as long as the dollar can stay below 91.09, that's still relatively bullish for the stock market. However, it's still possible that the dollar is not going to break through this resistance level and we're just completing a corrective wave to this larger bear market before we continue lower. So don't get bearish on the stock market just because the dollar is seeing somewhat of a dead cat bounce. Remember, this was a huge bear market for the dollar and it's not going to go full bull overnight. It's going to take a lot of repairing to fix this bearish trend and to get the price action back over these resistance levels. Next up is gold and we did see gold get rejected at resistance at 1860 and it does look like it's heading back to support at 1826. A bounce off of this support level could be a buying opportunity as we continue to ride gold back up to the 1860 resistance level. On silver, we could see we got a huge rejection at that resistance level at 29 and we're heading all the way back down through two support levels and we're back to the support level at 26.50. So silver is holding up in a bull trend and it is holding up above support, but it could still sell off from here. So you want to see a confirmation bounce off of this support level at 26.50 before you become too bullish on silver. On Bitcoin, we're starting to see a break out of this consolidation wedge, which is extremely bullish. We need to wait for this price action to close, but if we do get a close over 35,000, Bitcoin should get very bullish once again and it should start running towards my price target at $42,700. If we break and close over 35,000, look for that level to act as support as we bounce and test that level before we continue to head higher. On Amazon stock, we did have earnings after the bell and we had a very bullish day today going up over 1% and closing back over that support level at 3,300 for two days in a row. We do have a strong bullish trend, so I would call Amazon a buy the dip stock. And if we do come back down to this $3,300 level, it could be a strong buy. On Apple stock, we still have a bullish trend and the price action is still closing over a positive sloping 20 simple moving average. Look for Apple to test the price target at 136. And if we break and close over that on Apple, we could be heading back to 141. So Apple's still in a bull trend, which means it's still biased to the upside. And as long as we have this bullish trend, we don't want to get bearish on Apple. Remember, Apple's a market moving stock, so if it starts heading higher, the rest of the market will continue to head higher as well. On the financial sector, we're back to closing over the 5 EMA and the 13 EMA, and we did hold up above that positive sloping 50 EMA. On the industrial sector, we're back to closing over the 50 EMA, but we are looking relatively neutral and the industrial sector is still looking relatively weak. However, it did hold up near this support level and it is starting to bounce from here. On the healthcare sector, we're still closing below the 20 simple moving average, but we're also holding up above a positive sloping 50 EMA and we still have a positive sloping 20 simple moving average. So the healthcare sector is starting to weaken, but it still has a strong bullish trend in the medium and long term. So going back to the S&P 500, you can definitely see some cracks in the bullish armor, but we still have a bull market and the price action and the trend are still telling us that prices are still likely to head higher. So don't get bearish on this market until we see a confirmation with the price action and the trend that tell us that this market is going bear. Right now, I still see a bull market, even though it is weakening, it is still a bull market. So don't be afraid to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And remember to raise cash instead of trying to short. I never suggest trying to call a top in a bull market. It's just a recipe for disaster. So continue to stay disciplined and don't forget to check us out at the Stocks Channel Discord. We're a disciplined and profitable trading community and we're absolutely crushing this market. You can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So next up, let's take a look at the Stocks Channel Hot Stocks.
Welcome to Hot Stocks. Now you know why I'm an analyst and not a singer. By the way, if you watched Hot Stocks last night and you bought snow, let me know in the comment section below. So first up, let's take a look at Tesla stock and we see Tesla is back on the bull going up 3.93% today. Remember, I said that I'm going to be bullish on Tesla stock as long as the chart is bullish. The 5 EMA never crossed below the 13 EMA and the price action continued to show us that this stock wants to hang around and it possibly even wants to make another run for a new all-time high. So sure enough, today Tesla is back over all of the moving averages and we blasted right through that resistance level at 859. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Tesla come back up and try to break and close over that price target at 906. Remember, Tesla needs a break and close over 906 before it can start running to 967. I still have Tesla finishing a fifth wave, but I have no idea when the fifth wave is actually going to end until this chart starts showing signs of a reversal into a bear trend. So right now this stock is bullish, so I'm going to remain bullish, and the support levels are still around the 20 simple moving average around 836, but it is possible that we come all the way back down to the 50 EMA at 723. So watch the price action because the price action is going to be key. If we start seeing closes below the 20 simple moving average, we'll know the fifth wave is over and we're likely coming back down to the 50 EMA. Next up is NEO stock and I'm going to keep this very simple. NEO is a buy as long as it is above this $55 support level. If NEO breaks below 55, just get out because there is a lot of downside that could be in this stock. This is not a stock you want to hang around in and you want to try to play around with because it's definitely one of those FOMO stocks that went really far, very fast, and it has a lot of potential downside. However, above 55 means we can continue to stay bullish, but you can see the 5 EMA did cross below the 13 EMA, and it's not looking the same as Tesla stock. It's starting to develop some bearish trending, and if it breaks below support, it's going to be the dagger to the heart, and the stock is going to head much lower. So as long as we're above 55, watch the price targets at 61, but like I said, if it closes below 55, get out. Next up is Palantir stock, and we see Palantir selling off today, going down negative 8%. And we are back to a support level around $31, which was the previous high back here. It is possible that Palantir comes back to the 20 simple moving average, which is also a strong support level around $29. I still have price targets on Palantir at $36 and $45, but we would need to break and close over $36 for a few days in a row before we could run to $45. If Palantir gets to $29, I would say this is a buy the dip stock. However, if that level starts to break down, you want to watch the 50 EMA down here around $25. Next up is Zoom stock, and we see Zoom stock going up 2.59% today, and it is a very important day for Zoom stock because it did close above the 50 EMA. Remember, the 50 EMA was a very strong resistance level, and now that Zoom is closing above it, it could start to run. So look for Zoom to blast through $395 and start heading towards my price target at $418. Next up is CRM stock, and we saw CRM gapping up and running, closing above our first price target at 232. It's still fully possible we come down and close that gap, and we do find support around that 5 EMA. The outstanding price target above is still at $238. Next up is Snow, which was a brand new hot stock on last night's episode, and if you were paying attention to Snow today, you saw that it went on an absolute tear, and at one point in the day, it actually blasted through our first price target and was trading as high as $310. We went up 6.63% today, and we could officially say that we're breaking out of this consolidation wedge. We're building up a lot of bullish momentum, and you could tell from the price action that we're blasting through the 50 EMA with a very decisive close. So this stock is looking very bullish, and the price targets I want you to watch are 304, and then up here at 350. This stock is likely going to run very quickly, and it will have a lot of bullish momentum. If you like hot stocks like snow and you want to get on the ground level, I gave this stock to my Discord members last week and we were buying down below $273 and we're absolutely killing it right now. So I give brand new hot stocks daily to the Stocks Channel Discord members and if you're interested, come check us out. You can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market and making a ton of profits. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.